So let's look at an example now where we're going to apply this information um, to solve a problem. This first type of problem is one where you're calculating either the KSP, the solubility product constant, or the molar solubility. It's important that we understand the term molar solubility. Molar meaning moles per liter in solubility. This would be the number of moles of a solid that could dissolve in a liter of solution. In other words, the moles of a solid per liter of solution that can dissolve. You could be asked to solve for the KSP or the molar solubility. In this particular one, we're going to calculate the molar solubility given the KSP value. The KSP value for copper 2 iodate, Cu IO3 2, is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th at 25 degrees Celsius. This KSP value is pretty small, meaning that this is not a highly soluble compound. If KSP is very big, it's going to favor those ions or the products. If KSP is small, like this case, it's going to favor the solid or the reactants. And so this is something that is not highly soluble, but it will be a little bit soluble. We're going to calculate the molar solubility. The first thing that we need to do is write out our equation. And so I'm going to start with copper iodate, CuIO3, 2, solid. And that's going to be in equilibrium with its ions that are produced. Now if you notice in this equation, I have copper 2, and I just have one of those, because if you look here, this um, molecule of solid copper iodate just has one copper. But it's going to have two iodate ions, so it's important that we have a coefficient of 2 here. If you look here, it's got IO3 sub 2, meaning we've got two iodates per copper iodate. And so we've got two IO3 minuses, and that's aqueous. We can also write our KSP um, or equilibrium um, expression from this. So KSP equals copper ions, the concentration of copper, times the concentration of iodate. And we're going to square that because we're forming two iodates here. And again, we're not going to include the solid copper iodate in our KSP expression. Because it's a solid, we don't talk about it in terms of concentration. From here, we can create an ice table. And eventually, you're going to get to a point where you probably don't need an ice table for a problem like this. But I want to do this um, for this first one. To start off with, um, for our ice table, we don't need to write anything for the solid here. Because we're not going to even include that solid in our KSP expression. So we're just going to keep that blank. We do know in this case um, that the copper ion concentration initially will be zero and the iodate ion concentration initially will be zero. Um, and we're going to add some copper iodate to this. So next, um, we don't know how much copper ions or how many copper ions are going to be formed and so we're just going to use X for that. We know from our balanced equation that for every one copper ion formed we'll have two iodates formed. So if we used X for the number of copper ions that are that are formed it would be 2X for the number of iodate ions that are formed. Once we have this we can write what our equilibrium values are going to be and so we'll just add these two together 0 plus X is going to be X and 0 plus 2x is 2x. At this point, we can take those values, x and 2x, and we're going to plug them into our KSP expression. So instead of copper ions, we're going to plug in x, because that's going to be our equilibrium concentration of copper ions. And then our iodate ions will be 2x, and don't forget to square that. Whenever you multiply 2x, that whole thing squared, the 2 squared gives you 4, and the x squared gives you x squared. Multiply that by x and we get 4x cubed equals KSP. Now we're going to do a little bit of algebra here. Um, and I solved this out and I got that x is going to be the cube root of KSP over 4. In other words, I first divided each side by 4 to get KSP over 4. And then to get x by itself, I take the cube root of that. Or, in other words, I raised it to the power of 1 third. We know the KSP, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th. Divide that by 4, take the cube root of it, and you'll end up getting 0 0.0033 molar. What does this mean? That's going to be the concentration of copper ions right here, at which um, if we added any more copper iodate at all, it's not going to dissolve anymore. We've reached perfect um, saturation. If we add any more copper iodate, 
It's not going to dissolve anymore. Now, an important step to take here is to take a look at the ratios of copper ions to the solid. When we're talking about molar solubility, we'll do that in terms of the solid. If you look here, I'm going to have one copper ion for every copper iodide molecule. Copper iodate molecule, sorry. And so whatever this X is, 0 0.0033 molar, that's going to be what my molar solubility is. If there was a 2 here and a 1 here, then I would have to take that X value and divide it in half. But in this case, it's a 1 to 1 ratio, so this will be my molar solubility.